Hi everyone, it's Lee Goldstein, the Trading Director from 10 Minute Trades. Welcome to episode 32 of our podcast. Good for the week of 621 through 624. And I wanted to go over uh, the events that we traded this week and let you know what happened. Okay, so this week, let's talk about the opens first. And the opens, you know, they've been a little bit more challenging lately, but I think it's partly my trading. I've been struggling with signals, so I'm going to work harder on being a little bit less conservative, so I take more trades on the opens, and just I need to read the signals better. We've been actually testing the NQ, and three, three out of four NQs worked very well including some last week. We had one stop this week on the NQ. Um, and golden oil, overall, people are doing well. I can do better, just taking signals a little bit better. So, well, you know, we'll start, we're gonna start trading full size again next week. So I'm looking forward to them. Let's start with existing home sales. It was a first normal trade, normal, you know, our DNN news breakout trade. And it was a tiny winner. It didn't really move, didn't really do much. And we were able to make $20 on existing homes. On Wednesday, we traded Canada's core CPI. And we actually did that as a trap trade. It worked as a breakout and a trap. It wasn't gigantic on either side, but either setup seems to be viable on that news. And it was a decent profit trading that one live. And then we had the API report and in the afternoon, and we used our software, and we're very excited about the new software coming, coming out, and we used our software features to turn a potential loser into a small winner. And we will be discussing that technique in the trade room. So API was a small winner, and then unfortunately the 20-year bond trade, it's just been very difficult to make money on those bond trades. They're just not working well, and the 20-year didn't work. So then we go over to Thursday. We got up at three in the morning and everybody knows we've been yakking about it all week. We had a very good German flash manufacturing services trade and also the French version. Both of them made money. It was definitely worth getting up at three in the morning. And then the unemployment claims on Thursday, we didn't trade it live because when it trades by itself, when that news is released by itself, it has not been very profitable. And it would have worked great this week, but it's okay. We're keeping an eye on it. If it starts to trade profitably, when it trades alone, we'll start trading it live again. It's just that symbol. simple. And then we had flash manufacturing services, the 945 trade. We have a specialized range trade for that event. And it worked on our first target. So we made about 105 bucks on that one, just trading two small contracts. What we noticed though, is the gold breakout was tremendous. It was amazing. Gold had a monster move on that report. So we're gonna go back and start testing gold again. I used to trade gold on that report. So we'll do a dive on it and take a look and see how gold is. Natural gas is, as I said, it's my regret of the week. I've been talking about it, although here's the truth. Natural gas had rollover. It was the day after the report. So what happens, it was the day after the news gets released. So what happens is the contract that you're trading, called the current contract, versus the future contract or the contract you're rolling over to, they have similar volume. So we call that mixed volume. Natural gas is not a super high volume commodity to trade. It's not a very high volume instrument to begin with. So it's subject to liquidity issues. When we have what's called mixed volume, where the, when there's the almost the same amount of volume on two contracts, it cuts the volume in half that's available for trading. Because instead of all the volume being on one contract, it's split in two, mixed. So we have a rule where we don't trade natural gas live because you get bad fills and you get it's prone to whipsaws. Now, natural gas had a very large build, very large build. And in fact, we did an after the news trade with natural gas that worked great using signals. That was excellent. But the main trade we passed on, it had a monster move. However, it was very fast. Knowing natural gas, only a live trade tells you 100% what would have happened for sure. However, here's what I think. I think in my heart of hearts, it was a winner. But it could have not triggered the orders. It was so fast. It could have filled you very poorly on the candle, creating a tiny winner or a stop out. That's the truth about how I feel about natural gas. The oil Wednesday EIA oil report, 
canceled due to system problems? What's that about? We'll have to really check that out and see what's really going on. Oil was very volatile all week. It got down to, I think it got down as low as 101. Certainly, I remember seeing it at 103. It was volatile Friday uh, in the trade room for the open, which was a winning open. But oil in general has been quite volatile. And the EIA Wednesday report, which was Thursday this week, was canceled due to system issues. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then on Friday, we made money on University of Michigan revised data with new homes, and we traded just one contract. Hit our target, 12 tick target, 12 tick stop. Nice way to end the week with a winning trade. And then we went into our webinar for our new software release, our pre-launch. We're very excited about the new software. Make sure you watch your uh, inbox. Uh, you're going to be invited to a lot of events if you registered for that software webinar. My name is Lee Goldstein. I'm the trading director of 10 Minute Trades, episode 32 of the podcast. Incredible, 32 episodes already. A wrap up of the week 621 through 624, getting ready for the July 4th weekend and the software version 10 extravaganza. So we'll see you in the trade room next week, everyone. Have a great weekend.